Drake Hollow. We're back doing some more tips and generally a guide. I don't know quite what to call this, but we'll say it's like second tier or a little bit more advanced tips and tricks as you progress into, you know, kind of the second tier season. Uh, I got a lot of people kind of talking about different things and I thought I would take it a little bit further. So it can actually be very hard to manage your various uh, drakes, you know, our, our little friends here that we're trying to take care of. Like they do run the camp quite well by themselves. I mean, they look adorable. But uh, yeah, management can be quite hard until you get a good system going. So I do heavily suggest using your camp tab within the game. This kind of lets you know about their hunger needs, their thirst, their boredom, the XP they provide to the camp, their age, their type. And you can also see whether or not you have crystals in your bag in order to progress their advancements. You see that in the bottom right hand corner. You can also tab over here in order to see your camp status. And the left hand side there is particularly helpful. So you can see your max daily output and your daily need for all of the different requirements within the game. And I think that's quite interesting too. You can also see the tech tree to get an idea of where you're going in regards to all the different items that are going to be available to you. So another thing a lot of people kind of mentioned was the fact that, you know, kind of defending your base can be a little bit hard to do, uh, especially with so many different, you know, kind of enemies coming over time during the raids. And this is kind of the strategy that I've developed that I think is kind of useful. And at least for me, it's been very, very helpful. So with that, I've got my inner little fence. So that's my traditional fence I had when I was doing uh, battles. I've since added this second higher tier fence, which is a little bit stronger. It's gonna take a little bit more damage, except for those big guys come in and they, you know, they really, really damage things. So that's why I have this extra tier on the outside here. So this extra tier, I've kind of strategically placed in spots because it gives me a chance to get out there and attack things that are breaking my fences. So I've noticed that during a raid, kind of watch what spots specifically you get attacked from. And you can actually see, you know, like this area here has been taking a little bit more damage than another area. So we can come over here, we can set up this extra fence, and we can actually, you know, kind of block them a little bit until I can get over to that area in order to uh, kind of, you know, battle back against them and prevent them from destroying the important wall up here. So another important aspect of play, the management system, you click in the right stick. So you can actually repair uh, your different things. So you hold X after you've clicked in again, the right stick in order to inspect the area or platform equivalent. And then you get this menu when you hold X on different objects and you can repair, you can see the materials that are required and you can repair your various structures as they get damaged. And again, you see this wall here, a lot of, lot of damage to it. So we wanna take our little fence and kind of place that there. And I'm basically just kind of creating a sort of triple layer defense because the important thing is keeping your inside base protected. And it, it can be hard to do. And you know, you've got finite amount of resources. You need to actually be, you know, making sure in each area you go to that you have enough going into that next area so that you are equipped in order to battle and survive in case it's harder to get resources off the bat. And I also suggest since these ones you can't really jump over and you can't place a fence and jump over that using the fence, well, maybe you could actually do that. It was kind of glitchy. Okay, you can do that now, but you have to put them a little bit further. You can't put them right up against the wall, otherwise you can't do the jump jump thing. So you can do that if you want a full basic style. I also thought layering like this kind of is good. I haven't noticed that any of the enemies actually get through like holes, even smaller holes in the wall. Just kind of lets you get in because you can't just jump over here. Again, like my strategy was I was gonna put one out here, jump on it and jump over to my fence to kind of have it be a strong structure. But I guess I maybe put it too close and I was just kind of like falling in midair and you couldn't actually land and jump over things. Great. So another big improvement that you get over in this area is the advancement of really needing to use energy, really needing to have that available to you. And then you're able to build better structures such as the lobster tank, which presents me with, sorry, I gotta, no, I gotta get to the build tab. Uh, it presents me with the option to actually get a proper amount of food without having to constantly be sort of 
you know, having to uh, plant all of these crops because that takes a lot of scavenging to do, but you do need more power for that. It also lets me have better entertainment options for my guys. And if you are ever missing one or two items, don't forget you can go over to our pal, uh, the shiny crow guy up here. And he has a lot of materials that you can trade for. And while you're playing the game, you're very likely getting a selection of, uh, you know, these shiny objects in order to use to buy stuff like fabric and everything. But we're going to continue along kind of uh, showing off our new waypoint system that we got set up in this area. So also in our bag, aside from being able to tab through all of the different items we have, on the right-hand side, you can actually quickly see how much lumber you have, how much stone you have, all of those materials there, the fabrics are easily available and visible, which is kind of great. And I also want to check the uh, camp status here just to see our output. So we are, you know, we're going to need to actually build up the next tier and get some more food and stuff going. So we're going to have to go and scavenge in order to do that. But quickly, I wanted to show off. So if your drakes are injured, and you can kind of see that here and everything like that. Uh, going up to them, <laughs> he's playing, that's adorable. And holding X, I'm not gonna bother him, he's doing his thing. Uh, you can actually click to heal them. So you kind of get that like stuck animation there. And you can also get buffs. So the buffs, you can have uh, so many uh, available at one time. So you're seeing we have the option to obtain a buff. You can have, I have two right now. As you improve, you get more buff options. And as these little critters, the drakes, kind of advance, you get uh, more improved buffs. So I've got Lucky and I've got Hunger Spirit. So it increases the, the generation and everything like that. That's the healing right there. The buff system is just kind of a neat extra that I thought was important to mention. So if you do want to, and I don't know if I really highlighted this perfectly well with the waypoint system, if you do want the resources to actually go to your base, uh, you need to connect them directly to your depot over there in order for that to happen. And I, I did see some folks mentioning, you know, that they were having some issues with the, the waypoint system in the game, just in regards to, you know, kind of getting them over larger distances. It's really about placement. You can also place them in the mist. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed that right there, but that one is actually placed in the mist. I think we can maybe make one of those and kind of show that off here. Oh, sorry, I wasn't expecting to get attacked here. These things are so annoying. Yeah, there we go, now they're done. So yeah, we got our kind of quick tab here. Again, using the D-pad is much faster than like holding the D-pad or anything like that because you can just tap stuff. You can also repair objects if you go into your base. But anyways, we're showing the waypoint now. So you can see you can actually kind of set that up within the mist here and it creates a bit of a, a safe area, I guess you could say. So if you are having issues lining these up to kind of get them attached across like lakes, that is something you can do. Just keep that in mind. I thought it was, you know, valid to kind of mention that in case you were having waypoint issues because that was something where people were like i guess strangely impressed perhaps by the waypoint systems that i've uh, structured here and uh, if you do have any other questions specifically like well that or other things you know i try my best to help out with that but you do need to get your connection lines going because they can be such an essential thing in regards to not only your travel but your ability to get kind of essential resources that are really, really hard to come by otherwise. No, that's not good. This is also why we usually have a healing thing set up. Sorry, we gotta switch to our... Uh, what is my thingy here? I don't think we've got a great weapon there. There we go, we got to finish it off anyways. But yes, always, always when you're traveling, make sure you have healing salve available. Because it's just so important for being healthy when you're out on the go and possibly dying. And you can go and heal with your Drake Pals if we're wanting to adventure forward onto new lands. Let's see where we are on the map. Oh, we're kind of at the edge here. 
So we're gonna travel over to the Smith Farms in order to go out that way in order to reach a new island. So you can again adjust your speed on here if you kind of, uh, you know, do the acceleration. So you can click B to reverse. And you can also kind of lean in the direction you want to go using the stick in case you need to adjust your, you know, pathing when you are going along this because you have, might have multiple setups in regards to, you know, where you're headed, where your resources are headed. So that's something to keep in mind when you are going along this system. It's kind of like pretty cool, I think, you know, it's got like a weird, I don't know, I want to call it like kind of a sunset overdrive sort of vibe to it, you know, just the movement and stuff. Okay, we want to cancel that. We got the wrong one. We just want to get the either board here and then set up a waypoint across the island so that we can easily transfer over this place. So the game really is about, you know, getting to those new locations, finding better weapons, finding better tools, and keeping your supplies up as much as possible. It's got a very simple feedback system, but it's not one that you should, you know, take for granted at any point and continuously attempt to increase the options that are available to your drakes in regards to like water and food and stuff i think it's very important to keep that going because as you you know mature them get them to higher levels of like adulthood and everything they have higher and higher food and water requirements and it's just something that is you know it can really kind of sneak up on you that you're not getting their needs done if they are continuously kind of i guess you could say uh, dying or coming close to death, you can keep just healing them, but that is a pain to have to, you know, continuously come back and interact with them all the time. And that's why we also set up these waypoints so that we don't have to, you know, have as much of an issue getting back to them if needed. Is this for real right now? Huh. I did not expect that to actually happen. We're just gonna sit back here oh and i did have another question from people about leaving to the next area eventually as you progress story-wise you'll be able to go to the center here hold x and then move forward to the next section obviously the depot allows you to hold on to items if you want to that's something that should be you know just kept in mind for that kind of thing if it's needed but yeah i think getting the lobster tank going and having well i want a better water set up than that but they really needed water it was kind of driving me crazy to have to deal with. So that's why we have so many of those set up, but just, it's really about taking care of the the needs of your individuals, making sure that you actually have enough resources. You can plant more trees if you need them as well. Great, so we collected some lumber. I just wanted to show off uh, kind of building this again, because uh, I think we actually showed that off in our last kind of video, actually creating this thing and then you know, I kind of wasn't using that as a checkpoint. So then we got to build that. Okay, so the power aspect is interesting too, because you can create these things called relays, and you can do that with the water uh, as well. Uh, I don't think that's what I was meaning. I was thinking of here. So that's the power relay, and then we also have the water relay too, if you want to do it that way. So it basically allows you to create a pool, like this pool here. And while it's not set up, I just want to get the gist of it across so that you can create a system where, you know, you can have your power in the middle or you can have it like off the island or hidden somewhere, you know, power somewhere else. And then you can connect to the power relay and kind of relay power along. And you can connect multiple power sources to one another in order to uh, kind of fuel things if that's needed. Again, with the ability to power things being using the right stick, coming up to this open area here, and your power up clicking on that and being able to connect it to things oh, you actually got to be able to walk over there there we go and you can kind of connect it to the grid the icon will show if it has enough power if it doesn't have enough power it'll give you a sort of uh, symbol that's like hey it needs power it's very clear that you need that and then you need to create more power options don't worry your little guys will jump on that they'll generate power and you can also see from this menu here, this kind of viewing area, the, the inspection section, you can see when your stuff is replenishing, when water is, when your entertainment replenishes. Oh, there's the gift from our little pal. He's got the object above his head. So that's something to keep in mind. 